So there have been a lot of questions about this problem from homework two, about whether this loop would ever terminate. And in particular, the third one, where knowing whether or not the loop would terminate depended on the Coats conjecture, which is, which is an open mathematical problem. And this was definitely a hard question to try to make sense out of um, based on what we've seen just in the class. But my hope was that that question would get you thinking about several important things in computer science. Um, and I think it did from the discussions. Uh, it may have got you thinking about them in a more frustrating way than I would have hoped. And I'm sorry for, for people who found this very frustrating. Um, but there's some important lessons to draw from that. And the first one is that you can never make a conclusion about how a program will behave in all cases just based on experiments. Any interesting program has an infinite number of inputs, like that loop where there are infinitely many different numbers, and you can't try it for all the integers because there's infinitely many of them. You can do experiments running it for a bunch of them, see that it always seems to stop. The loop always finishes for all the ones you try, but that's not enough to know that it, it always finishes for all inputs. That's a very different claim than what you can show by any experiment. Um, the other point that I hope that question made, and I hope without too much frustration, but, but I understand especially if you didn't find the hint that this was a, a very hard thing to figure out what to do with, was that reasoning about code, and especially reasoning about properties that depend on following pass-through code, is very difficult. And it's not just difficult, it's been proven that it's impossible in general, that there's no way in general to take some code and answer this question of whether that code always finishes. For some code, there is a way to answer that question, and that was the case for the other two parts of that question. For the third one, even though it looked like fairly simple code and didn't use anything that we haven't seen in class so far or that you couldn't understand from the class, even for that simple code, determining whether or not that code would terminate on some input is equivalent to solving some known open mathematical problem that no one knows the answer to. Um, there are other cases where we can actually prove that it's impossible to determine, in general, whether some code has some property or not. And those are things we're not going to get into too deeply in this class. They're things that I, I'm glad that you're starting to think about, and we will continue to encounter them. And then I hope you'll be asking these questions and, and disturbed enough by these questions that you'll want to take a theory class later that will really get into the reason behind this and understand the theory of what kinds of things computers can solve and the things that they can't solve. Um, so. That was the intent of that question, and I'm sorry people found it frustrating, uh, but I hope you also learned a lot from that and started to think about problems the way computer scientists think about problems by doing that.